Hi, my name is Mark Menning, one of the co-founders of Actera Pharmaceuticals. I would like to give a brief introduction to a particle characterization technique that allows us to rapidly characterize formulations in our drug product development lab. I will be giving a high-level introduction into the, this technique by providing a few application examples. The two main examples I will touch upon will be powder blend characterization as well as comparing tablet and granule disintegration. The Focus Beam Reflectance Measurement Probe, or FBRM for short, is the probe that we are using to perform the characterizations in this webinar. This slide provides a schematic of the operating principle whereby a laser is presented to a rotating optics module that focuses the laser to a fine spot at the sapphire window. Now when the particles pass by the window, the laser backscatter is then detected as timed pulses at each particle intersection. The timed pulses are then multiplied by the scan speed to generate the collection of the chord lengths for the particle system. We use the FBRM probe to characterize active ingredients and common excipients in our lab. Now what's nice about this probe is that it can be used in virtually any size container over a wide range of solids content. So for powder blend characterization in this example, we're using a four centipoise silicon fluid to suspend the particles. The silicon fluid does not dissolve or interact with our powder blend, so it makes a good choice for suspension and characterization. Uh, so in this application example, we're only using five milliliters of fluid for only a few tens of milligrams of powder. And then this powder blend is suspended by a small magnetic stir bar in the bottom of the scintillation vial. So this is a nice setup if you have limited quantities of sample. The parameters of two, uh, two meters per second scan speed, the macro mode, and length weighting are all probe settings that we have found to be appropriate for monitoring these powder or granular systems. These next slides will cover the data output from the FBRM probe. The chord length distribution on this slide is for an unmilled sample of an active ingredient. Again, we're using an inert fluid, so our primary interest is to provide more or less a fingerprint of the powder blend system. And so this is not unlike what you would be doing for other techniques such as mesh analysis. So the same active ingredient was then milled and the resulting chord length distribution is presented in this slide. So you can see the unmilled uh, produces a very coarse distribution and then the milled uh, blend or milled active ingredient um, there's not only a shift towards a finer particle size distribution, but there's also an increase in the particle counts. So th this is a very nice feature of the FPRM probe. Not only does it provide useful size information, but it also measures the population count distribution for the particle system. This can be very useful in studying the effects of processing conditions, even setting up particle size specifications, or even selecting the appropriate excipients to match the active ingredients. Now another way to look at these counts that, uh, that are generated by the FBRM probe is to trend the overall total counts. In this case we're looking at the number of particle counts from 1 to 1000 micron. So the trend in this figure is pretty much a flat line because there are no dynamic events occurring in the mixing suspension. Now we add more powder to the vial and now we see the corresponding increase in the total counts. So the distribution is the same but notice the peak height increase with the increasing number of particles that have been added. So the FBRM software also allows for normalization of the distributions. This is useful to compare the relative shape of the distribution after the addition or generation of more particles in the experiment. In this case, we added the same particles, but in some instances, the particle size and shape may be different. So since we added the same particles, as you could expect, the distributions look identical when normalized. Now we're going to switch over to formulating the milled active ingredient that we just characterized, and we're going to formulate it into a tablet. The active ingredient concentration is high at greater than 
in this formulation. So we've, we've also added a common filler, which is microcrystalline cellulose. cross caramelose sodium is the disintegrant, and magnesium stearate is the powder lubricant. So we will be comparing the performance of tablets made either by roller compaction, which is the dry granulation process, and a high shear wet granulation process. So this, this slide shows a typical problem that is encountered during pharmaceutical product development. Early on in clinical development, a simple suspension is commonly used for dose escalation studies. But as the program progresses through the clinic, there's a desire to change to a commercially viable formulation such as a tablet or a capsule. In this hypothetical example, the pr tablets prepared by dry granulation are shown to be comparable to the suspension formulation whereas the tablets prepared by wet granulation have a slightly lower exposure. Now, as is the case usually, the in vitro dissolution profiles look very similar. This is not surprising because the design of the dissolution method is usually dependent on solubility, and oftentimes there's an adequate volume of the media to rapidly dissolve the active ingredient, leading to a lack of discrimination in performance between the two formulations. Now we're going to switch back to using the FPRM to characterize the resulting granulations after processing. So each of the respective blends has either been wet or dry granulated, milled, and then blended with the extra excipients. So immediately you see very distinguishing features and differences between each granulation. I just want to point out that this is the same method using silicon fluid that we use to characterize the unmilled and milled active ingredient in the earlier example. So you can see this is a very quick technique to just characterize the resulting uh, granules uh, from various processing. And just to compare how the dry granulation it looks to the milled API, you can see it's a very similar shape overall, but it is shifted to the coarser distribution just from the processing. The granulation produced by wet granulation, on the other hand, has a lower particle count and a much coarser distribution. These lower particle counts, it's probably from the addition of water as a processing solvent, which may have dissolved some of the finer particles and coalesced into the larger granules. So the FBRM, you can see, is very uh, useful in distinguishing between the two processing methods uh, for this formulation composition. And again, I just want to point out how quick uh, and rapid this technique is, so it only took about 30 minutes total to measure all the characterization examples, so these granulation examples as well as the API. So after we compressed the, ta uh, the granulations into tablets, uh, these were again the same overall weight and same overall tablet hardness. Now we want to study the fate of the tablet and granule disintegration. So this time for the FBRM measurement, we're only using, we've now switched from using the four centipoise uh, suspending fluid, fluid, now we're using 50 milliliters of purified water as the dispersant. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're interested in characterizing the dynamic changes that occur during tablet and granule disintegration in water. So since we are trending the tablet disintegration in real time, we're able to grab distributions throughout the disintegration process. In this slide, there's, there is a distribution just at the point of tablet disintegration, and we show that by the dashed line. This point also corresponds to the point of maximum number of particles released from the tablet. So from this point, we start monitoring the disintegration and dissolution of the granules until about 10 minutes where we observe no additional changes in the particle system. So for the tablet made by dry granulation, there is a shift in the distribution to the left, indicating the primary granules are breaking down further into finer particles. And then also note the decrease in the total number of counts in the system. This is probably due to the active ingredient dissolving in water. So this process is also illustrated in the figure provided on this slide. So for the wet granulation, the same distributions at the same time points are plotted for tablets uh, um, made by this process. 
In this case, the overall width of the distribution is very similar at the beginning and end of the experiment. So what this indicates is that the primary granules are not disintegrating like what we observed for the dry granulation. So the slight increase in the fine counts is likely due to the attrition of the large particles during the mixing process for the measurement. So if we compare the final distributions back to the unprocessed powder blend, the dry granulation at the end of the disintegration test closely resembles the unprocessed powder blend. So this means ultimately that the formulation composition is behaving like it was designed to. So it preserves the starting active ingredient particle size overall. However, this is not the case for the wet granulation sample. That final distribution particle size is much coarser than the starting powder blend. So you can imagine if this were a BCS class 2 or a class 4 compound that has dissolution rate limited absorption. This shift in particle size may affect the in vivo performance where dissolution rate is proportional to the diameter of the particle. So you can see where the FBRM measurement technique provides insight into the underlying performance of the tablet and granule disintegration processes. Also, the FBRM could be used to further optimize the wet granulation for formulation. So for example, the disintegration levels can then be increased to a concentration that closely resembles the unprocessed powder blend. And this could be done rapidly and iteratively, all very simply, just by characterizing again with the FBRM. Now these next slides show different ways to treat the data generated by the FBRM. In this slide, we are comparing the total particle counts for the dry and wet granulations over the entire range from 1 to 1,000 micron. So a couple features shown by this data presentation are the, the lag time for the wet granulation uh, tablet. And you could also see the slow erosion up to a point of plateau, indicating no additional change in this uh, uh, disintegration behavior. And contrasting that with the dry granulation, you see the, the point of uh, a tablet disintegration uh, as indicated by the uh, spike in the distribution. Again, that corresponds to the, the highest uh, particle count, uh, followed by granule disintegration to the plateau region as well, indicating no additional change. So there's also flexibility to group whatever statistical range that you desire to characterize the size regions of interest. Here we've broken down the distributions into four segments, and, and again, you have flexibility to bin whatever regions you'd like. So we're just here plotting less than 50 micron to, to show some of the f uh, fine particles, and the intermediate range between 50 and 150, and 150 to 300, and also the coarse range from 300 to 1,000 micron. This same data that we gather from the trending uh, at the beginning and final distributions can also be summarized in a tabular format. So for these examples, trending the 150 to 300 micron and also the 300 to 1,000 micron ranges show some of the greater differences that could possibly explain why the overall performance differences uh, exist between the two tablets uh, from the two distinct different processes. Now this next slide I want to show the reproducibility of the FBRM characterization technique. This slide shows two different tablet samples produced by two different manufacturers at the end of the disintegration test. And now these are measured in triplicate as well. So the uh, FBRM is able to clearly show distinguishing features uh, between each of the tablets. Um, in this case, they're the same product, but just manufactured by two different uh, manufacturers. Uh, and so again, uh, performing this test in triplicate shows the, the great deal of reproducibility with this measurement technique. So they're basically superimposable uh, at each um, characterization. So in summary, the FERM probe is a very reliable tool for the formulation development lab. And again, it's one of our most uh, go-to tool in the Adactera Pharmaceuticals. I'd also like to reiterate the relative time savings using the FERM probe. So all of the analysis for the presentation took less than two hours to perform. 
And this, as you can see, gave us a wealth of information on characterization of the milled and unmilled active ingredients, as well as the two granulation samples. So the FPRM was also useful in monitoring the tablet and granule disintegration behavior, and this provided us some very useful insight into the underlying mechanisms for the product performance. So all of these dynamic events can be monitored again in situ, and that's what makes it uh, pretty easy to set up and characterize. And uh, the applications are very limitless for us at Actera Pharmaceuticals, um, and the FPRM can be used to confirm scale-up, site transfers, and even lot trending for each product. I would like to thank you for listening in on this presentation today. Again, my name is Mark Menning. I am uh, one of the co-founders of Actera Pharmaceuticals, along with my colleague, Sean Dalziel. Our product innovation lab is located in San Francisco at the QB3 at 953 Indiana Street. Now that's an incubator space near UCSF Mission Bay campus. So please feel free to contact us at contact at actarapharma.com or you could visit our website at www.actarapharma.com.